Good morning. I am Zanya Winans. I am the owner and founder of Golden Proportions Marketing. We're a full service dental marketing agency that's been around close to 20 years, and I have the unique privilege of being married to a dentist. So I have a really good insider view on everything that you guys go through. Um, any of you in here that do know me will know that while I love theory and strategy, one of the biggest things that I'm about is action. I like to deliver action-oriented information that you can literally go back Monday morning and start implementing. So that's what we're gonna talk about for the next 20 minutes are 15 really fast ways that you can start to improve your new patient calls. And the way you're gonna do that is by conversion. So, and of course my clicker is not working. There we go. Okay, so most of you are here because you wanna be this blue duck, right? You wanna be the one that is noticed in your market. You wanna be the one that stands out, that is memorable in a sea of yellow ducks. And that takes an awful lot of effort. That's trying to get to the top of the search engine page for dentists in your area. That's paying for Google ads. That's social media engagement. But I'm here to tell you that all of that is absolutely useless and effort wasted, and my clicker is not going to behave, so we're gonna do it this way. Um, unless you are actually able to convert your leads into new appointments. So, now we're working. All right, so 15 fast ways that you can do this. One of the first ones is to make sure that your contact information is immediately visible at the top of your website at all times. Often you're gonna find that website designers love everything to look cohesive and consistent. And you're gonna find, if you look at your website, it's probably just blending in with the graphic design of everything else that's going on in your site. You actually want your contact information to pop out at the top. Another way to do this is with sticky navigation so that when someone starts to scroll through your site, they can immediately go to your contact button and get a hold of you very, very quickly. A second way that you're gonna to wanna to do this is online scheduling. Online scheduling, I think, is one of the greatest innovations that has come to dentistry. The reason that this is important is if you think about when your patients are trying to get in contact with you, it's the times when you are either not in the office or busiest. So because we're in marketing, we care a lot about the results. We do recorded phone calls for every single one of our clients. We have recorded and digested information for close to a million phone calls. In those million phone calls, I can tell you the greatest call volume coming into your office is at the times when your patients are taking care of their personal business. Around seven to eight in the morning, 10 to 12, when they're at lunch and when you're at lunch, probably not taking calls, and at the end of the day when they're on their way home. So 75% of the patients who call your office and are not able to get through because you're at lunch or you haven't started work for the day or you're done early, 75% of them are not even going to leave a message. They're gonna hang up, ignore your voicemail, and they're not going to call you back. That is a huge wasted opportunity. By utilizing online scheduling that is always on your website, always available for them, they are immediately able to contact you, make an appointment that fits their schedule, and move on with their day. And I promise you, you're gonna convert more appointments. Okay, I wanna do a quick exercise. Everybody take out your phone. And I want you to go to your browser, open a private tab. This is important because I don't want your website to be cached. I want you to type in your website address. Do not hit go yet. When I say go, I'm gonna hit the stopwatch on my phone. And when your website is fully loaded, I want you to stand up. And we're gonna see how long it takes for your website to load. I think it's gonna be a little longer than some of you might be hoping for. All right, everybody ready? Start. We're at six seconds, eight, 10 seconds, 13, 16, I'm still getting people up, close to 20 seconds. I'm gonna stop at 30 because for a website that takes longer than three seconds to load, 40% of your users are simply gonna click the back button 
and go find another office. And of those who do stick around, 80% of them are never coming back to your website. If your website utilizes video and large images that are not compressed and it takes a while to load, it is going to cost you patience. This is a very simple change that you can make to ensure that people are actually gonna to get to your website and stick around. Okay, fourth thing is social proof. So a great example of social proof, they've done these social science experiments where someone has been walking along the street and they will just sort of stop in the middle of the street and look up and there's someone, an observer on the sidelines, and they are watching this individual and they're watching the behavior of the people around them. And they have noticed the number of other people who do not know this individual who has stopped and looking up, and they all start looking up because they all wanna see what else is happening up there. We don't wanna miss out on something that everybody else is seeing. That's a great example of social proof. Basically, we do not want to be the guinea pig that is the first person to do something. We want to know that there is validation from everybody else out in our market and our audience that says this is the right dentist to go to. So ways for you to use social proof on your website are things like obviously testimonials and reviews, um, videos from your patients telling them how great you are, Celebrity endorsements. If you have patients in your practice, for example, who work at a local news station or on a radio station, that validity that comes from their endorsement is worth a lot to the person who's considering coming to your practice. A couple of other great ways to use it are logos. Every single one of you graduated from dental school. Simply the act of putting your dental school logo or your local dental association or the fact that you're in the ADA or the AGD is proof to someone else who is visiting your website that you are important, that you are valid. A good example of this is even if you are paying for a top docs issue in your local magazines, even though it is paid, there is so much value in putting that top docs designation on your website because again, it's credibility from another unpaid source. Here's another good example. Dr. Josh Bernstein, a client of mine in the San Francisco area, he wrote a book about painless dentistry. It's a guide that's available on Amazon. The sheer act that it is available on Amazon says other people think this thing is valuable. Now, adding office hours to the footer of your website, simple little thing. If you do not have your office hours immediately visible, your patients are looking for that information. Here's the reason why. Because 41% of them want extended hours. They don't want to miss work. They want to come in early in the morning or later in the evening if they can. They want to be able to bring their families in at a time where they're not going to miss work. And 36% of them want weekend hours. Now, I'm not telling you that you need to start working on Saturdays. But if you have even one day a week where you see patients at seven in the morning or until six o'clock at night, simply put that on your site, make it visible and available for them. Live chat. I don't know how many of you actually have live chat on your websites, but think about the last time that you were shopping somewhere. You were on Amazon or you're on um, someplace looking for new shoes and you have a question. Do you pick up the phone and you call the company or do you hit their chat button to ask a question? Because we're in this society where nobody actually wants to talk to each other anymore. We just want to use live chat. 42% of customers that do not want to engage in actual voice conversation, they prefer chat over sending you an email or conversing with you on social media. And 63% of them are more likely to come back to you because they know you have live chat. When you look at the response times, it totally makes sense. It makes sense. The average response time on an inquiry is 17 hours for email. I've got a delay here. 10 hours on social media and only two minutes on chat. How long do you want to get, wait to actually get a response? Photography. I am a huge fan of custom photography. We are all very well aware of what stock photography is and how long it takes for someone to realize that it's stock photography because you can look at the photograph that is at your gas station. It's the same photograph that's on a billboard for your bank. And when it appears on your website, your audience immediately knows that this is stock. So utilizing custom photography, you can have a single one day photo shoot 
that will last you with enough photographs to cover the next two or three years. That kind of personal engagement is, again, social proof for your audience, but it's a great way to tell people that you understand the situation they're in. It feels more personal to them. It's really important, though, that it is demographically appropriate. I was just at a meeting um, and working with a, a new dentist who was building a new website, not with us, and she was looking for my opinion on the first draft layout that she got from this web company. And we were looking through it, beautifully well-designed website, but what we started to immediately notice is that the stock photographs they used did not actually match the categories of what they were talking about. When there was a section of family dentistry, we were looking at a 35-year-old woman, no family around her. When we were on a page for implant dentistry, it was a picture of a like 35, 40-year-old guy. They might have been very attractive pictures, but they were not something that actually represented the topic that was important to the end user. Addressing objections. Your patients all have objections. When they call your office, the first questions that they ask you are their objections, and they're looking for you to overcome them. They want to know, how much does this cost? Are you open until 6 o'clock at night so I don't have to take off of work? Do you take my insurance? Do you have a payment plan? If you can address their objections on your website, on your landing page, in your social media, before they even come to you, you've built trust with them because now you've broken down that barrier before they even have to ask you that question that can often be a stumbling block for your front office. This website, I think, does a great job of moving forward. We are having connection issues. This website does a great job of moving forward with those objections because they come right out and say, do you need Saturday appointments? We accept your insurance. And for those patients who do not participate with insurance, they have an advantage plan, an in-house membership plan to help them. All right, now, engaging headlines. Once someone gets to your website, you want them to stick around. People do not actually read your website top to bottom. I'm sorry to tell you, they just don't care about all that wonderful content you wrote. It's great for Google. It's not for the consumer. What they do care about are headlines that pull them in, different things like bullet points and numbered lists, something that grabs their attention. Now, if you want to write a really great headline because you do have something important to say, there's a great formula that you can use. We call it the EAT formula. E is the end result that I want. A is addressing the objections, and T is what is the time period that I want to have this happen in. So let's do an example. For example, the end result that I want is replace my missing teeth. My objection, as many of your patients probably is, is cost. And your end result time period that you want this in is, let's say we want this done before Christmas. So let's practice how this could work. There's a couple ways to do it. You can do it as the EAT formula. So for example, we might say, replace your missing teeth by Christmas for only $500 a month. We've told them how quickly we can get it done. We've told them what the end result is going to be, and we've addressed their cost objection. You can also just do E plus A. So it could say, restore your smile for only $500 a month. And then ultimately, you can do it in a slightly different order, the A plus E plus T on a budget, with care credit, we can get your smile restored by Christmas. Look at the headlines in your website, on your landing pages, anywhere where you're trying to get engagement from your end user and see if you're actually addressing these three things. And if not, you can rewrite them and I bet you're gonna see an increase in conversion. This one I love because it is one of the smallest little changes you can make that can have one of the biggest impacts. So when you have a call to action, which should be on every page of your website and your landing page and anywhere you want someone to take a next step, most people write things like schedule your appointment. We want to be able to insert ourselves in the situation. We need to see ourselves. We need to buy with emotion and justify with logic. So emotion is seeing us in this situation. If we can literally change it to schedule my appointment, that single word from your to my, Unbounce has demonstrated up to a 90% increase in conversions with one word in your call to action. That is something every single one of you can do Monday morning to start to see more new patients. Blogging. 
Most of you are probably paying another company to do blogging for you, but this is something that you can do on your own and it's really simple to implement. But I wanna tell you why it is so important. Most of you in this room probably do a somewhat regular search for dentist in whatever town that you're in. For example, I live in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania. I would be searching dentist in Lewisburg. And we're gonna wanna see where our site ranks, right? Because that's kind of an ego thing for us. We wanna know we're at the top because we think that's what's important to the consumer when they're searching. But in reality, it isn't. Only 20% of search is when someone is ready to make a decision. That's called transactional search, or they're doing a little bit of navigational search. How do I get to this dentist in Lewisburg? 80% of search is informational. People are asking questions. How can I whiten my teeth at home? Why do my teeth hurt when I eat ice cream? What can I do when my child has fallen and knocked out a tooth? 80% of your search, they're just asking questions. So that's where a really well-written blog can address all that search traffic. If you could increase your website traffic by another 80% by simply writing the answers to the questions that you know your patients are potentially asking, you're gonna drive more traffic to your website. There's going to be trust because they see you're the one to answer their questions and they're gonna be much more likely to call you. So I would recommend that you actually start making a list of all those questions, those simple common questions that your patients ask you when they call and when they're in the office and then start using those for blogging. This is an example of our blog. We have over 200 different blogs and another 60 or 70 different videos because this is so important. The difference in the amount of traffic that we get and people who are just stumbling across us versus putting all of my eggs in the basket of trying to rank number one for one particular keyword, we're getting a lot more bang for the buck with this kind of strategy. Another one in personalizing your call to action. Most of you probably have a contact form where you want someone to submit their information. But we've already learned that it takes an average of 17 hours to respond to this email that gets submitted in this form. By this time, your prospective patient has given up and moved on and found another practice. If you had chat, at least you could respond to them in about two minutes. The simple act of changing that call to action to include a photograph of the person they might wanna pick up the phone and call if you don't have chat, it personalizes it. If you have appointment questions, talk to Kelsey. So literally add in the photo of the person that they're going to be talking to and there's an immediate emotional connection that will again increase conversion. Benefits, not services. Your patients know you're a dentist. They all assume that you do the same thing. They didn't go to dental school, so they have to assume that you know how to do a filling and to do whitening and to take out a tooth that is hurting. But the reason they're going to buy is because of how you're going to make them feel. So you wanna to look to use feeling words, not action words, in anything that you are writing. For example, replace your missing teeth and find your smile again. That immediately tells me what this person's experience is going to be like at the other end. Regain happiness, restore confidence. There's a lot you can do to make someone feel confident. 14, deliver what I actually asked for. Sounds crazy. I did a search in our community. I simply typed in family dentist. And when the Google ads came up, this is the one that came up at the top, and I'm believing they're probably using dynamic search, meaning that they're automatically dumping my keyword into the result to make me feel like this was the answer I was looking for. But when you read the ad, the majority of this ad is about dentures and implants and on-site denture repair. Well, as a family dentist, that's probably not what I would expect you to be doing. So you've literally given me everything but the thing that I was looking for. It seems obvious, but you wanna be extremely targeted in delivering the response that your audience is asking you to give them. And the last one, by the way, this is the exact page that I got for the family dentistry inquiry. That doesn't look like family dentistry to me at all. The last one is managing expectations. People want to be told what to do and what their experience is going to be like. 
And you can do that with them by literally giving them a three-step list. Break down what their experience is going to be like with you in three simple steps, and you have eliminated the opportunity for conflict simply because they feel comfortable knowing what they're going to walk into. Their first step is schedule and complete your implant consultation. Second step, get a clear understanding of your costs and financing options. And the third step is to restore your smile with budget-friendly payments. There is nothing complicated in that, but it tells me when I walk into your office exactly what I can expect in our interactions together. So, as much as you wanna spend all of your time becoming the blue rubber duck, think about the experience that people are going to have once they actually make it to your page, your landing page, your social media page, so that they want to interact with you to the next steps. Thank you so much. If you have questions, I will be in the back.